Hello and welcome to the screencast on using R to perform uh, maximum likelihood uh, fitting. In this case we're going to start with a very simple model where we're going to use uh, maximum likelihood to fit a simple regression model. Uh, first by writing our likelihood function or negative log likelihood calculator. Some people think of it as just the objective function. Uh, and then just using some of the tools that are primarily are in the BBMLE library by Ben Bolker uh, to look at that model, look at fit, look at confidence intervals, and, and other sorts of things. So we'll start again. We want a nice, simple, clean example. So we're going to just fit uh, a model where we have a, a hundred observations uh, and just y and x, both continuous. And as always, it's going to be nice and have a nice, simple, clean relationship just as a starting point, something like that. And as always, we can first, and it's always a good point of comparison, we can just use LM, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, fit the model, and do all sorts of things. Even with LM, look at the summary confidence intervals, uh, the very, uh, parameter covariance estimates, and what have you. Um, we can also, even, even though we haven't fit it explicitly by maximum likelihood, as I've shown before in class, uh, that we can get our log likelihoods in AIC and BIC values even with an LM fit, just by doing that. And we'll come back to that afterwards, because we'd like to compare our results from our objective function to the LM fit. All right. Even though uh, LME2 is just a wrapper for the optim function, that's the main one in, in R, we're going to use it largely for this class. Uh, if you have questions about how to use Optum, which is sometimes use, uh, useful for some other things, please come speak to me. But you should definitely install this library if you or, haven't already, just go and then uh, uh, require it. And most of this comes down to, as we've discussed before in class, understanding this function. Uh, this is our objective function that we want to write, or our negative log likelihood calculator. Sometimes you will hear it called, uh, in particular in Ben Bolker's book. I think that's how he describes his function. And there's sort of two pieces to it. First, we've got the deterministic component of the model that I've separated out here. You don't have to do this. It's just I find it cleaner. So just y pred is just a plus b times x1. So just intercept uh, plus slope times the our covariate, which is just x1 in this case. Uh, and as you can see, a, b, and we'll come back to sigma. Here are arguments in our function. Obviously, we're going to allow these to vary, so we need to provide that. And here's sort of the, the meat of it, then. We're assuming a normal distribution to the model. And the response variable here, y1, our data, that's our y1 right there. <clears throat> our mean, of course, is our deterministic piece of the model in this case. And it's nice and simple. We just mean equals y dot pred. And the residual variance for the model is just going to be sigma. It's just standard deviation what we're fitting. And we're going to do take the logs of the probabilities as opposed to using absolute probabilities. And then we're just going to sum them. And we're going to use a negative log likelihood, so we're doing negative sum. And like I've spoken uh, about in class before, that's really the heart of the matter. Once you've done that, pretty much everything else is straightforward. Once you've written that function, we're going to use the MLE2 function that's in the BBMLE library to, to optimize and find the best fit of it. And it's quite easy to specify it here. What we've done is we've specified the name of our objective function, the name of the negative log likelihood calculator, linreg fun one. And then we need to give it some starting values. So we make a little list, start equals list, and you just go list a equals 14, b equals 0, sigma equals 1. I can't remember why I picked these numbers. It doesn't particularly matter right now, although it's worth playing with them to see what happens. Um, <clears throat> and literally, we just Grab that, run it, and that's all there is to it. Now what you'll see is you've got in the uh, terminal window, you see all these red warning messages. In denorm, blah, 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 NANs produced. Reason we're getting these errors in this particular case, and this is an error you don't need to worry that much about, although when you see it, you should pay attention to it, is it's because uh, this has to do when, when the maximum likelihood fitting is going about its trying values. You haven't told it there's not values it can't take. So for instance, it doesn't know that sigma can't be zero or negative value. So it may try values that are zero or negative for sigma and get basically not a number output. So it's letting you know that some of the values it tries don't work. And again, if you can always just write warnings to, to get those as well. Now thankfully, most, most of what you want, uh, Ben Bolker's made a, it quite nice and you get a nice little summary 
uh, back, you get the call of your model with the starting conditions. Your estimate standard errors, the walled, uh, I think these are the walled statistics, and the probability is associated with that, and the negative log, or two times negative log likelihood, or otherwise known as the deviance uh, of this model that you get directly back from here, um, which is great. So we, we sort of have most of what we need right there. Um, of course, we can specifically ask for the log likelihood using the log likelihood function. In this case, I'm going to use the negative log likelihood. I'm just going to call that. And if we want the deviance directly, we can just call deviance on this. And indeed, we get to 56.5, and it tells you how many parameters you've estimated. They call them, again, the degrees of freedom, three. And you can get AIC, as we normally would. Um, and it's just a point of comparison to our linear model. How does it compare? In fact, our AIC is identical, which is good. It makes sense, that regardless of whether we fit this by um, uh, minimizing some of squares, or least squares, or uh, maximizing the probability, we should be getting the same results in this particular case. Um, uh, as we've discussed in class, in this particular instance, these two should be equivalent. Um, of course, we want confidence intervals, and Ben's made that quite easy in this case. If you call confint on it, it, you'll see this message profiling, and then you'll actually get confidence intervals for each of your parameters, including your residual variation, which I've as pointed out to you in class is always a good thing to do, because this is something that you're estimating here. Again, we get some warnings. We could look at the warnings to see it, but in this case, it'll be the same warnings. I do want to make a point that profiling can sometimes take a long time. For a simple model like this, it's not an issue. But when that's going to be the case, when you're using more complex models that may take a while, you can actually just save the output from the profile like this. Just call the profile. It'll do it. And then you can just use that directly in, in confidence intervals or whatever. So you can get your confidence intervals. And we can compare these confidence intervals to what we observed for the original model if we want, which was called model1.lm. Here, let's do that. Confident model1.lm. And we see that they're not identical, 0 0.3799 to 1.67 uh, versus 0.3716 to 1.68. They're a little bit different. Uh, and in fact, you will notice that in general, the maximum likelihood one should be a touch narrower. Um, and you should think about why those might be narrower. We discussed this in class about why we might have narrower confidence intervals and narrow, narrower standard errors and other such things. The other very useful thing to do with the profile is to actually plot the profiles um, to see if there's anything wonky going on. Now, hopefully, your, your profiling functions look relatively smooth, but sometimes you'll see some uh, strong, uh, strange cur curvature, or the functions aren't particularly monotonic, and that suggests, okay, maybe I should be definitely trying a bunch of different starting values, which you should do anyways, even if you don't see this, to make sure that you're, that you're actually converging on the right estimates. So here we're just going to use, we're going to actually pro plot the profile object we have. Abs equal t is, we're just saying we want the absolute likelihoods, uh, and this conf uh, vector here. I'm just basically saying what are the confidence intervals that we want to look at. Um, so 99, 95, 90, 80, and 50. And we get a plot that looks much like this. And this giving a profile for the intercept, the slope, and the residual variation respectively. Now if you look carefully, in particular at sigma, you'll see that it's not perfectly straight. There's some mild curvature, which is exactly what uh, we'd expect here, and it's a little asymmetric. Again, we've seen that before in um, particular when we've plotted the 3D surfaces uh, for such models like this when we did it numerically. Um, often, in this case, we have nothing to worry about. It looks pretty sensible. We should still probably try different starting values just in case, but it looks pretty sensible. If there were strange uh, curves and uh, bends in these particular things going up and down and up and down, we'd be more concerned. And just like before, we can actually use the VCOV function, and this produces the variance, covariances par uh, parameter estimates. In this case, it's doing it from the Fisher uh, information matrix. matrix. Uh, that's well done, Ian. There we go. Uh, so if we wanted to look at the, the uh, standard errors of the parameters, we could do so. Um, and again, it's worth noting uh, that these standard errors will be a little bit uh, smaller than the ordinary least squares, and I'd like you to think about why you might see that. And this is the end of this first tutorial, really. This is all it is. This is the basic tools. The next tutorial we'll do is, will be for far more complex models uh, with, with real data. Um, so thank you.